What's going on YouTube? Forrest Proctor here and today I'm going to talk to you about the Fujifilm Instax Mini 40 Instant Camera. Let's go. All right, so if you're new to the channel or if you've seen my channel before, you know that I talk mostly about video production, cameras, lenses, techniques, business tips, whatever. Um, I don't get into photography as much, but I do intend to get more into photography because I do a lot of photography. I just don't tend to talk about it on camera for some reason. And I definitely don't talk about instant cameras very much or ever. This will be the first video. But today I wanna to tell you about this camera because I went to Disney with my kids and I've always got like a DSLR or something with me and I wanted to do something different, something out of my comfort zone and also something to bring me back to the fundamentals of composition, lighting and just photography in general. So I decided to buy this and I've used it for Christmas, uh, vacations, uh, just walking around, hanging out. So I've got a lot of examples, I've got a lot of experience. So let's get into this camera. Okay, first of all, what kind of camera is this? Well, this is a instant camera, meaning that there's film inside of the camera. Whenever you take a shot, it exposes onto the film, prints it out, and boom, you have a picture right then. You don't have to go print it or order it or anything like that. So that's the kind of camera that it is. Now, more specifically, it is by Fujifilm, um, and it takes the Instax Mini uh, film cartridges and uh, I'll get one of those in just a second. Here they are, so it comes in different little, this one's actually for my daughter, it's uh, glitter. Anyway, it comes in different, this is monochrome, you got regular colored film, um, so it comes in a lot of different like styles of film and it's I think the most popular um, by that company. Now let's talk about the price, like if you wanted to just pick this up, which is very user friendly, very beginner friendly, if you wanted to pick one of these up, I've seen them anywhere from $79 to $129 and the upper end ones come with like a pack of, you know, a pack of film and maybe a strap or something like that. Mine actually came, let's get the box. Mine actually came with just the camera and I've actually never seen this box again, not online or anything like that. Um, so that's interesting. Um, maybe it, I bought it at like a discount store where they buy stores that go bankrupt or stores that have overstock. So maybe it was like a Target edition release or whatever, but either way, I tested the camera before I left the store and it worked really awesome. So you can find it between $79 and $129 depending on where you get it. I actually got mine for $35 because I was at a junk store. Okay, quickly I'll talk about the aesthetics and the quality of the materials. So the aesthetics are actually really cool. So it's got like that vintage black and silver look to it. Um, everything is plastic, but it doesn't feel like, it's plastic, but it doesn't feel like super cheap, you know? So I'm okay with the plastic. Uh, you've got these nice chrome buttons here and that's a selfie mirror. So it's chrome, the rest of it's kind of like this muted uh, silver look. And then this, I don't know if you can see, that has kind of a texture to it. Um, you know, almost like a snake skin. I, I don't know what you call that. They did it like in the 70s and you know, all throughout time, but it's really big then. But it's a really cool camera and actually my brother got me this vintage strap from Let's see, from Camera Caddy in New York, which is super cool. He got me that for Christmas, like the same time I bought this, so shout out to him, appreciate that. So it kind of adds to the look to me. And you know, walking around Disney World or the park or something like that, like this, this is just a good look. Like that's a good looking camera, especially with that strap there, so. Okay, key features. Um, the first two are actual features or things that are on this camera. The last one is just kind of like a bonus if you're a beginner, but the key features are gonna be your flash there. Um, it has these light meters to where it measures the light in the room or outside and decides whether or not to fire the flash. The flash goes for probably 12 feet in my experience and I'm just kind of guesstimating there and then the other feature is going to be that selfie uh, mirror there which you'll use if you need to take a selfie with your buddy um, you can kind of use that to frame up I'll get into that a little more and how good it works but that's kind of the key features to it yeah so I want to stress if you are just getting into um, instant photography I think this might be one of the best cameras you can get because you just load the film in the back um, 
press this button to turn it on. Basically when the lens pops out, that turns it on. And then the selfie mode is actually an extra pull, like that. Uh, and then you can do that thing with the mirror. But for our purposes, if you were just out walking around the park uh, at a soccer game, I mean, it doesn't matter. You just press that button, boom, it's on. You look up, you see yourself in the viewfinder, or at least I do, and then you fire the shutter. I'm not gonna fire the shutter. Um, I could, and I'm sure the flash would go off, or maybe it wouldn't because of this light, but um, yeah, if you're just getting into it, you turn this thing on and you take a picture pretty much. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the best practices to get the best pictures, and then we're gonna go through some examples. This camera is an absolute no-go in low light of any kind. I found that it works best pretty much in broad daylight, utilizing shade to dictate your lighting a little bit. But even, they say don't use it in sunset, and I totally agree with that. But even like 30 minutes before sunset even begins, it gets almost a little too dark. Um, now, the exception to that is if you're really close to something and it's using the flash and you're okay with the, the stark difference of your subject being super bright and your background being really dark, which I have some examples to show that, um, but it's not really great in low light. Now, one of the things I noticed with my focus was it's a re there's a really uh, a narrow window of getting something in focus and out of focus, depending on how close you are, so I found about 10 feet with just the regular mode 10 feet away and with my subject framed in the shot like you don't want them small because they get blurry you want them pretty well filling up the frame um, see if I can find something just offhand it's like you want them pretty well filling up the frame um, but even in that mode I would use the selfie because the selfie gives you almost kind of a macro lens effect it's just gonna take some getting used to. Like you're gonna have to take some shots and you'll get some blurry shots because you were about five feet away without using the selfie mode and you're gonna lose that film, which is totally fine. You're gonna just have to learn how to use it. But the focus is kind of hard to nail on this thing. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is when you are focusing to get a very sharp image, I found you have to hold really, really still. And I even hold still. I, I hold still when it fires and then I just keep holding as it's printing. And once I see the tab coming out, that's when I kind of stop. So just, a, I don't know, it's just something like, just a practice, like a sniper, just to hold still the whole time. Because I don't know how actually, how long that shutter um, is, is taken to expose onto the film. I honestly don't even know. It's freaking magic in my opinion. But either way, I got sharper images when I was holding very, very still. Okay, so now I do want to go through some example images, um, some of them that I like, some of them that I don't, um, talk about some of the problems and then also some of the things that made the picture good. So the first thing, I'm, well, first one I'm going to look at is a picture of my daughter actually at Disney World um, and we're just sitting like on a bench waiting for a ride to, to get on. But as you can see, it's just a nice picture of her sitting there. Um, the light is okay. She's sitting under the shade of a tree, but the flash is also firing. And so the background's really bright, but it kind of compensates there. And it ends up being a, a good image. I feel like I, if I was just either use the macro mode or been like a step further away, she would be sharper. But overall, I just like the character of the picture. She has a nice smile. So that's a plus. Um, this next one is of actually three, my, all three of my kids. Yeah, I got hundreds of kids. Just kidding, just three. All three of my kids sitting on a hotel bed. It was actually when we first got there, so they were like super excited, super energetic, which I knew would be a great moment for a photo. Um, plus, I like the three little ducks at the top, which was like the background of the room, like the wallpaper, so it kind of went with that. And I don't know, they're wearing their Christmas sweaters. It kind of encompasses the moment, to be honest. Like we just walked in the room. So I really like that photo. The flash fired, of course. You can kind of see some of the blown out part of the, the headrest, but ultimately the character of the photo outweighs any of the technical problems in my opinion. So the next photo, I, I really like this photo too. This is the bridge going to Tom Sawyer's Island over uh, in Magic Kingdom. And what I like about this photo is the composition. 
And I, I knew I wanted this photo when I saw the bridge before we ever got to it and we were going over on the ferry. Um, I saw this photo and I was like, you know, I just want that, those leading lines to the center and I want everybody walking. So I kind of hung back. I didn't stage it or anything. Um, it's not terribly sharp, but none of these pictures are terribly sharp. I think it says a lot and I, I think I managed to get everybody in there, including my wife at the very front. So I don't know. That picture is cool. I like that picture. All right, so the next photo is of two of my kids, Harley and Hudson, and they're just hugging, getting together for a warm embrace, if you will. Uh, I can't really tell you where we were because this is one of those situations I was talking about where the, the background is way darker than what the flash is supplying onto the skin tones, and you know, you don't know where they're at, honestly, but I know who they are, and both very genuine smiles. Um, the faces aren't too blown out, and the blues of the shirts really pop out in this photo. I don't know. I really like this photo, um, so I'm happy with that. Now, in those situations where you do not mind if the background is black, and you know you don't mind that, that's totally fine. This is going to be a great photo, especially when you're taking pictures of people, when it's more about the people than the environment. Okay, the next photo is at Epcot. It's like the big ball thing, whatever that crap that thing is. It looks like a golf ball. I guess that's what people call it. Um, it's okay. The background is slightly blown out, but not as much as I would have thought. And the focal length on that thing is like 60 millimeters. So it's really hard actually to get a photo there because you have to be far away, but the further away you get, the more obstacles are in your way. And so that was about the best angle I could get to get the majority of the ball. But I do think it's kind of a unique perspective rather than just that close up big wide thing that you usually see at the entrance. Um, next photo is gonna be the castle. And this is one of the bad examples actually um, of kind of how, you know, you gotta be careful with shooting on the shadow side of things. Yeah, there we go. So the shot, like I'm on the shadow side where the sun would be on the other side. And the castle just comes out really dark. Yes, I could probably go in there and edit it a little bit, but actually I try not to edit these photos. I like them to come out the way, you know, that they come out and then I scan them in and that's that's it. Um, I might add a little saturation, but um, not really a lot of just editing. So the next photo is gonna be Slinky Dog. Here comes Slinky Dog, I call it. And it's just Slinky coming down the, uh, the rail I guess there um, which I think composition wise this is one of the better photos one of the best photos actually how it's kind of swooping in from the center of the frame and then he's coming down almost at the camera it, it was one of the situations where I think if I would have shot it about an hour earlier it would have looked fantastic but it was getting dark I'm on the shadow side my flash didn't quite reach slinky dog and you know it is what it is I still like the composition I still like the photo um, but it would have been awesome if it was just a little bit brighter. Okay, so for these last two, um, I really like these. They're they're more nature based, but uh, so we've got this tree formation here, kind of walking through some trees, really scraggly looking trees during winter. But you can see the sky and all that looks really nice. It's really saturated and you can make out the clouds and I just really like that photo and as a series you know I might do this on Instagram but you know that and this is the same trees but I'm standing come on now come on now all right there we go old lens so I'm standing in the center looking up so I don't know I just really like those as a part of the series and actually if I can I get like a side by side going yeah, so maybe I should have done one more. Maybe I should go back and do one more. Um, what do you guys think? Hit me up in there. Tell me, do you give a crap about instant photography? Um, I guess to close this whole thing up, the whole reason I wanted to do it is because I just wanted to get out of my comfort zone. I've always got a 5D Mark IV or an EOS R5 or something like that hanging around my neck, taking super high quality images and I can sort of take 10,000 of them and it doesn't matter. Um, and that's cool, but I found this was going to be a way to get me out of the comfort zone, get me back to the fundamentals of photography and really caring about every shot because they do cost, you know, between 80 cents and a dollar ten, depending on where you get them and how much you buy at one time. So yeah, if you're like that and you want to get out of your comfort zone and try something new, 
Um, plus, I thought it'd be something fun to play with in video editing. You know, putting these into videos, you know, I could be on a shoot, take some Polaroid pictures or some Instax pictures, incorporate that into the video and just adding a little bit of layer and just trying to innovate a little bit. So um, I'm glad I got the camera. I'm hoping to review a few more instant cameras because I want to, I want, kind of want to take it up a notch a little bit. Um, I like these images, but I think I could do better. Um, so if you're into that, make sure you uh, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do that. I always forget to say that, but I really appreciate it because while I'm running a video production company, I'm also trying to get in here and do a few videos for you guys a month and just talk about my experiences. And I know this wasn't like video production based, but I do appreciate you watching and we'll see you later. Peace.